Good morning. Welcome back to Mama Bee Made It. This week I want to prep some of my meals. It's Monday morning here um, while I'm recording this. And the first meal I want to uh, prep today is some chicken, broccoli, and cheese burritos with rice. And I've already started. I actually started recording this video to, only to re realize it wasn't recording. So here we go again. Take number two. <laughs> All right, so I've already put about a fourth of a cup of rice on a burrito tortilla, and I have some um, canned chicken, home canned chicken, and I'm just going to add that on top of the rice. I love canned chicken. It's so convenient. Home canned chicken. <laughs> it's delicious. All righty. Now I'm going to add some of the broccoli. This is just a basic like mac and cheese sauce that I made up and white rice and some sl slightly steamed broccoli. I didn't want it fully raw. And this is the second time I'm making this recipe. I just kind of made it up as I went and the one regret from last time was not uh, putting enough sauce on the burrito. Alright and now I'm going to add some sauce. So this time I'm going to make sure that I add a nice amount of sauce and then we're going to top it with a little extra cheese. I was thinking of pre-baking these, but everything is cooked inside. Some of these, because um, it's just my son and I mostly for dinner with my daughter having moved out and my son, or I mean my husband, <laughs> being a truck driver and the older three kids all on their own. So we will eat a couple of these tonight and then some of them will go in the freezer. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I want to pre-bake them or not. I really just don't know. I think I'm just going to put them all in this uh, 9 by 13 casserole that I have here, casserole pan, and put them in the fridge, and then I guess I will decide what to do with them next. If you all have any suggestions, if you pre-bake your burritos, if the filling is already cooked, I'd really like to know what you do. So we'll just make one more together and then I will, the next time you see me, we'll be working on the next recipe. Before I wrap this up, I'll tell you what I plan on making for this week. Like I said before, about a fourth of a cup of rice. About the same amount of broccoli. Oh, I forgot to put cheese on that one, didn't I? Oh well. <laughs> I'll remember this time. Okay. And the chicken. It doesn't really matter. I realized the chicken went first last time, but I don't think it really matters. As long as everything is on there. Excuse my sniffles. It is the season. Now, I suppose you wouldn't need the cheese. I just don't like, I realized I don't like a dry burrito last time. They were pretty dry and they still tasted good, but it, it could have been better. Don't critique my burrito folding. <laughs> I haven't made a ton of burritos in my day. One thing I did learn is seam side down always. <laughs> that way it's much easier to pick up. Alrighty. Alright, well, we will come back and um, pick up on the next meal. Oh, I said I was going to walk through with you what we are going to make for this week. So we have a 
a trip coming up at the end of the week, so I want to get everything planned till then. So, um, chicken, broccoli, and cheese burritos, tuna patties, butter noodles, and roasted vegetables. We'll make the tuna patties together. Um, baked potato casserole. I'm just making this up. I have some baked potatoes from dinner last night that I need to use up, and we're going to do kind of like a breakfast casserole for dinner. And then um, the other half of this rice, we're going to make some stir fry. And then Friday, we're going to, for Friday, we're going to make some goulash, which we prepped that together already. Um, for those of you that didn't catch that video, I will post a link. But this is the goulash in a jar. And we did that last week or the week before. Like I said, I'll put the video down in the description so that you can watch how we made that. All right, the next time you see me, we'll be working on the tuna patties. All right, so instead of moving on to whatever I said before, I decided to do the stir fry because that's the simplest, quickest one next. So I already have some frozen broccoli stir fry. I will link the video when we made this together. Um, this is just a bunch of veggies uh, that I had out of the garden and um, some that needed to get used up. But like I said, I'll link that video so I have the stir fry veggies and I have the rice. I'm going to grab a bag for the rice. And we are just going to make this into a kit meal. And this will be for, for dinner on, I believe, Wednesday. So this will just go right back, or right into the fridge. Easy peasy. I like to try to incorporate meals that have similar um, ingredients to make it really quick. If I can cook for two or three meals all at once, then... It does help. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I cook like this all the time. I would like to. I think all of us would like to, but it just can be hard to stick to sometimes. Life gets busy. Things happen. You just feel lazy about it, you know. Harvest comes all at you all at once. Thankfully, my garden is done. And I love the garden, don't get me wrong, but it's done. And it's the time of year where now I'm just catching up to everything that came in. I have some things that um, we'll prep together probably next week. I don't know. I want to do some prepping, or I mean some preserving this week, but we'll see. We got some things to get ready for at the end of the week. All right. After I made a mess. And you can see this is still ste steaming, so I'm not going to... Put this in the refrigerator just yet but we'll put these things all together in a bag and i'll put the day that we're going to eat it and what it is on the bag i thought i had my marker so i guess i will do that in a little bit Right now, that's two things I can check off my list. We got the broccoli and cheese burritos, check. Stir fry, check. So the goulash, um, I think all I'm going to do for that is, because I already have it prepped in the jar, so I don't think there's any prepping I need to do for that. I'll just cook the noodles on the day. We have um, garlic bread to go for that, and it's already in the freezer. All right, so that is three meals finished. Tuna patties and baked potato casserole are the last two, and then I will have an entire week's worth of meals done. And that'll be less than an hour. All right, so for the tuna patties, I have four cans of tuna in water. You could use tuna in oil because I am going to add just a little bit of oil to these. 
one package of whole wheat crackers just crumbled up nice and small. And this will make about four, or I mean not four, six patties. And a handful of onions. All right, and three eggs. I love these because they're easy, quick. I know you probably can't see my face right now. <laughs> but standing is sometimes easier for me. All right, let me grab the oil. Just a smidge of oil. And now we're gonna mix them all up until they are easy to patty. season them. Okay, a little bit of, this is ground, or gar, granulated garlic. Can't talk. <laughs> okay, and onion powder. Salt and pepper. Let me get my pan. Alrighty, let's mix the spices in and patty these up. Now you could throw some cheese, um, cheese in these, add more like peppers or whatever you want. I love these for a quick add-on. With our tuna patties, we are going to have... Uh, butter noodles and roasted veggies and those I'll just uh, I already have the, the veggies for roasting in the oven and I will link that video down below I mean in the freezer not in the oven <laughs> that'd be a bad place for them for that long okay nothing magical about the this part just patting them up putting them on a greased lined baking sheet I'm gonna bake them at 400 degrees for 20-ish um, minutes. I usually flip them after 10. Now you can fry these in a pan just like you would any other kind of burger. Um, but my husband has a hard time uh, chewing crunchy things because of his dentures. So the oven makes them have that yummy flavor but not quite so crispy around the edges. Alright, there's two. Now these are all meals that I could have made on the day, but to be honest, by the time I'm done prepping, th or I mean, preserving things, I don't always feel like doing it. So then we, we never really eat out, we just end up eating things that are probably could be a little healthier if I were to take the time and, and put something together. Looks like this time I might have made them a little big and I'm only going to get about five. which is fine if you have a larger family just i would add probably a can of tuna um, per person it's just my son and i will be eating these and then whatever we have left over we'll throw in the freezer for a quick meal another day i always like to make plan things with a little bit of leftovers that way if we have a day where I just can't even think and I didn't prep and I'm not completely out of luck. Alrighty, I'm going to throw these in the oven, get myself cleaned up, and uh, we'll be back for the last recipe. Alrighty, let's start prepping this casserole. And first thing we're 
there, oh my goodness, let, listen to me trip over my words. <laughs> These potatoes are massively huge, and I'm not trying to make a huge breakfast casserole this time, so I might only end up needing one of these potatoes. These are just baked potatoes from last night that are cooled in the fridge. Easy to cut into, you can peel them if you want. I'm not worried about taking the time to do that. See, we had some appointments this morning and now while I'm waiting for one to finish with, uh, and to go back and pick them up, I'm just whipping up all our week's dinners. And the nice thing is that some of these will have leftovers and we'll eat those for lunches or like I said before, we'll just grab them out on a day where I didn't plan so well or whatever. I never know what life is going to throw at me these days. Just doing a, a very rough chop. Just throwing the potatoes in the bottom of the pan. And this will be breakfast for dinner one night this week. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and make a second casserole. I won't make you guys sit through that. So I'm just going to use one potato for this one. In the second casserole, I will cook and throw in the freezer. And I don't know if I mentioned, I will pre-cook this. So it's not just sitting in the fridge with raw eggs. Not probably a great idea. 350, I've never done one in a pan quite this small, so I couldn't really tell you the time. I'm going to say probably about 30 minutes, but oh yeah, that's plenty of potatoes. And then I have some pre-cooked, uh, sausage here. Use probably about half of that since I'm going to make a second casserole. And throw in some peppers and onions. Pre-chopped peppers here. Just a mix of red, yellow, green, and orange. Some of them from our garden, some of them not. I get impatient with my peppers. I always end up eating them green. It takes forever for them to turn colors, and fresh peppers taste so much better than the ones you can get at the grocery store. It's not to say you can't get good ones, they just taste better, in my opinion. Okay, I think that looks like enough peppers. Some pre-chopped onions. I prepped some of these things um, on Friday because I knew this weekend was going to be busy and that I wanted to make some dinners to help myself out this week. So if you have extra few minutes sometime and you don't know what you want to do <laughs> with yourself, which who really has that, but sometimes I guess people do, just prep some things, you know. Or if you're waiting for something to cook or can, prep some stuff, you know, things that you use all the time. I wasn't sure how many eggs I should use, and looking how full this is, I'm thinking maybe six. And of course, eggs don't rise a lot. I'm, it will rise a little bit in the oven, but it will flatten back out. And I will be putting this on a baking sheet just in case it does overflow. Okay, four, five, six. I like to season my eggs before I do anything else. Pepper. Little Lowry's. Well knock off of Lowry's, uh, granulated onion, and a little granulated garlic. Oh, and I did go ahead and put some non, um, some, uh, I lined my pan for ease of cleaning and I oiled it. You want to oil it or it will stick. And Okay. 
right. Eggs are scrambled. And we'll see if I need more, but I really don't think so. I just want to cover the casserole. Maybe I will. I just really don't want to overflow. Okay, I think I'm going to do about four more eggs real quick. So that'll be a total of 10 eggs. If this were a big casserole pan, I probably would have done 12 to 18. That's two. Three. And if you hear the timer in a second, it's just for the patties, the tuna patties that are finishing up. So it's all coated. I think I'm going to top this with some cheese. And then as soon as the other dish comes out of the oven, this one will go in. Perfect. That was perfect. So 10 eggs for this small. I think this is actually a rectangle. Um, like half a... No, it would be one fourth of a sheet pan. Cake pan. Okay. I'm not going to put a ton of cheese on there, just a nice little topping of it. This is actually really pretty looking. <laughs> Hope it tastes as good as it smells and looks. And then we'll probably have a maybe a nice apple muffin to go along with this and there it is all pretty and on its way to the oven and I'll come back and show you everything um, as I am finished and ready to put it in the fridge all right and here is everything this is our breakfast casserole sorry for the jarring movement of the camera um, we got our our tuna patties, our stir fry, um, this is the burritos, and here is our list. We did all five dinners, our chicken, broccoli, cheese, burritos, our tuna patties, um, and we'll make the, bus the butter noodles and the roasted veggies on the day, and then our baked potato casserole and our stir fry. Uh, chicken stir fry and our goulash with garlic bread and the goulash of course we uh, our future or our present self is definitely thinking our past efforts because uh, thankful for our past efforts all right now this mama is hungry it's time to have some lunch Y'all have a great day, and thank you so much for joining me. Oh, and I forgot to say that it took approximately, with baking times, about two and a half hours from start to finish, and I got five meals done. Not bad. And we'll see you on the next video.